Russ, how are you doing this evening and what's happening downtown? Betsy, I'm doing just fine. Just a moment. Kudos to you. You said it was going to be cold today, and, and you were correct, as you usually are. Things remain quiet here in the official protest zone. No one here, as you see behind me, the Justice Center, as you said, Betsy and Jay, other protests are taking part in other taking place in other parts of the city. We'll have more on them later. Right now, let me introduce you to Patrolman Kevin Davis. He is a retired Akron police officer, Akron training officer. He is considered an authority across the country in training law enforcement. He's written several books on the subject, and he's now an independent consultant. Patrolman Davis, thanks so much for talking to us. They really appreciate it. Now, I know that, again, you do not speak with the Akron Police Department. As we pointed out, you're an independent consultant. You agree with the grand jury's decision. Tell me why. Well, I find that, yes, I do agree with it. Uh, I find that it is consistent with the rule of law uh, in these types of use of deadly force cases. What you have are th in Ohio, three different seminal uh, case laws apply. Uh, number one, Tennessee versus Garner, which is the use of deadly force on fleeing felons. Uh, number two, Graham v. Connor, which is uh, application of uh, use of uh, force uh, and the application of the Fourth Amendment uh, in use of force cases. And finally, State v. White, which is a, an Ohio case which applies uh, Graham v. Connor to Ohio cases. Okay. Uh, let me ask you this. Was there one piece of evidence that you heard as the prosecutors were laying everything out yesterday that you think turned the case or made the, the grand jury make the decision it made? I don't think it's one piece of evidence. When you examine these cases and when the investigators uh, look at these cases, they have to look at what's called totality of the circumstances or everything that went on, uh, the events leading up, uh, that could be the uh, pursuit the uh, previous night in New Franklin, the uh, second pursuit that went on with Akron PD, and then uh, the shot being fired at Akron officers, and finally the, the suspect precipitated actions, which led to, his, unfortunately, to his own demise. But Truman, uh, when you hear people criticize the fact that Jalen Walker was fired at 94 times, by police in less than in seven seconds was hit 46 times. What do you say to that? Well, each officer uh, makes the decision based on their own perceptions. They all have the right to use deadly force to save their own life. And in those types of circumstances, when you perceive that your life's in, in danger, you can fire shots quickly. Uh, most of them have uh, between 16 and 18 rounds on, on board in their pistols. And when they, they're fearing for the life, they can fire rather quickly. That doesn't mean that the total number of rounds is indicative of excessive force, but each officer is responsible for the rounds that they fire. So when people say 94 rounds in less than seven seconds sounds a bit excessive, you say not really given the equipment they have. Well, it's not so much the equipment. It's just that each officer makes the decision based on their perception that their life is being threatened with deadly force. They're allowed to shoot to defend them themselves and shoot to save their lives. And when they do that, uh, oftentimes they can fire uh, uh, you know, a number of rounds in a short period of time. In an expert in, in these matters, again, looking at the evidence, is there anything these officers could have done differently? Or do you think they did everything by the book? Well, once again, they, they're responding to what the uh, Mr. Walker was doing. Unfortunately, he set the wheels in motion, which led to this confrontation. It, it, it appears that he did that purposely, uh, you know, seeking this outcome, uh, which is a tragedy for all involved. Uh, but uh, it, under those circumstances, uh, it's reasonable for the officers to have exercised their right to use deadly force. And again, this underscoring of the disclaimer that you are not speaking for the Akron Police Department. Congresswoman Amelia Sykes has called for a Justice Department investigation into the practices and procedures of Akron Police. Do you think that's necessary? No, I, I, I think it's one of those political responses. Uh, I believe in this situation, the FBI, when they look at this shooting, especially in, the fight, uh, in light of the fact that Mr. Walker was armed and had fired a shot at officers, that they're going to find that uh, there is no uh, violation of uh, civil rights under color of law. And the Akron Police Department has a stellar reputation in law enforcement. I'm going to ask you now to put on your former patrolman hat. You you protected this community for 25 years, I believe. So you, you're a veteran here, obviously, in Akron as well. What do you say to members of this community who are angry this afternoon? Well, I think that uh, they need to examine the facts and circumstances. Oftentimes, what appears to be uh, excessive at first blush can be reasonable, and that's the standard of law. In, in these situations, 
we can't react with remote uh, emotions. We have to uh, react with the, uh, our review of the law, law and the legal practices or the legal standards. Patrolman Kevin Davis, going to take my glove off and shake your hand. I want to thank you so much for coming out today. Really appreciate your insight. Thank you so much. Thank you.